Hey, welcome to Bourbon Bill's Pirate Bar. Today we have an exciting show. We're going to do some tiki drinks with a twist because we're going to use moonshine from Florida Moonshine Company. But before we get into that, make sure that you hit that subscribe, like, and hit that notify bell so you're the first to know when we upload new content to this channel. We'll be right back. Hey, welcome back. Did you hit that subscribe button while we were away? Now, we have a special guest on the show today. We have Phil Perkins that's here representing the Florida Moonshine Company. Phil, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you brought today? Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to share this with you. It's a new company we just started this year, um, based in St. Augustine, Florida. It's a wholly owned by three women. Um, well, at least we know it's being run by a tight ship. I know, <laughs> and hopefully we'll have them here uh, sometime in the future if we can get all three of them in the same place and time. Get all but, those planets uh, aligned up. That's right. <laughs> so anyway, I'm here just to talk about, um, these are our current products, and these are the new products that are coming out here in just a few weeks. It's exciting. Oh, it's a brand new product, so yeah. you get the inside scoop. And uh, yeah, and you get to taste them too. Uh -huh. You'll be really pleased. Um, What's unique about us is the Florida Moonshine Company, um, if you go back in history, you know, moonshine made up in Kentucky and in Tennessee, it's all corn based. It's this, you know, good old white lightning moonshine, it gets you drunk quick. Uh, in Florida, they made some corn based moonshine in the panhandle, but they were made out of rum, sugar based, in the rest of Florida. So the Florida Moonshine Company, we're unique because we do both corn moonshine. So if you really want that hillbilly mountain stuff, here it is. We've got one that's 111 proof. Woo! That will really, yeah. I mean, you can clean paint brushes and stuff. Yeah, there's, there's a reason that. why it's called white yeah. lightning. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we've got our flavored moonshines, uh, the Duval Punch and Miami Red Hot. This is our cinnamon uh, whiskey uh, uh, competitor, um, if you like. Fireball, you'll love this. And then the new products that we've just recently launched, again, rum-based, we've got a pina colada and a black raspberry, which is superb. And I brought this one along. This one's not gonna be in the market for some time, but I really wanted you to, to try it. This is cotton candy flavored. Moves. Oh, actually we did. We had a bootleggers ball. It was a fundraiser right. with Montanzas Bay uh, Buccaneers here a few weeks back. And I gotta tell you, it's not what you think. It's, it's not terribly sweet, but it really does bring across that cotton candy flavor. Yeah, and when you ask people which ones they want to taste, this one's low on their list, and then you get them to taste it, and it's like, wow, let me have another, please. Yeah, I was helping so, out behind uh, the bar there, too. So, yeah, yeah we, we had a ton of fun, and it was, it was really exciting to, to share these new flavors. Now, we're going to go ahead and... Our, we have three cocktails teed up for you today. We're going to tiki some of these up and we're going to put a little hillbilly twist on it. So we'll think, we think you're really going to enjoy it. So let's get right to it. All right, the first drink that we're going to try out today, we're going to do a little twist on a blue Hawaiian because we're going to be using a, a new product from Florida Moonshine Company. We're going to call this one the Hillbilly Hawaiian. Bill, tell us a little bit about this one. Well, this is a uh, moonshine made um, with a rum base. Uh, this is what makes Florida Moonshine unique. And it is a fruit punch. So you'll recognize it as a fruit punch cocktail, just as is. But it's a, a rum base and uh, it's quite smooth and very easy to drink just as it is, but I'm really excited to see what you're going to do with this <laughs> as you tiki it up. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Wow, that's really good. That's really yeah. something different. All right, so let's let's go ahead and make it get our, our tiki on, get a little freaky, and we're going to make this just a little bit different than the typical blue Hawaiian. So first we're going to start off with our mixology and craft uh, mixing set. It's the Boston Shaker set. You see me use it on the show all the time. It holds up well. It's fantastic. So we're going to start off with two ounces. Oh yeah. Two <laughs> ounces. Throw that right in the mix. Okay now 
you hear me say this a lot on the show, you would cut an onion for a, a dinner. So why aren't you using the fresh stuff for your, your cocktails? So here at Bourbon Bill's Pirate Bar, we always use fresh juices. So we're going to put in one ounce of fresh squeezed lemon juice into the mix. Get that out of the way. It's a little harder to squeeze a pineapple, so we do we do cheat a little bit, you know, when it comes to like cranberries or or pineapples. We we do use the canned and bottle stuff, but we try to use the high quality stuff. So for for this one, we're going to add in two ounces of pineapple juice. Throw that in. We're going to put in one ounce. We're going to blue this up just a little bit more. It's got this lovely aqua green color that's going on, but we're going to blue it up a little bit more, make it more like the original blue Hawaiian. One ounce of blue curacao. Cecilia and I were, were uh, we had a fantastic cruise last year, and we, we had the opportunity to visit curacao. What, we didn't know what to expect, but oh my god, what a gorgeous island. So if you ever want to make, want to make a trip of a lifetime, go, go to the ABC Islands, and that would be Aruba, Bonaire, and Curacao. Now, I picked the uh, cream de coco last because this one does tend to gum up the jigger a little bit. So we're going to throw in one ounce of the cream de coco. Look at all that gooey deliciousness going right in there. Squeeze that right in for about an ounce because you don't need two ounces. All right, get that in there. See what I mean? How it kind of gums up the jigger? You, you want to do this one last so it keeps all your other ingredients pretty much true to the measurement that you're looking for. Alright, put that in. We're going to just throw in a couple of agitator cubes. Cool that thing right down. And we're going to give it a good shake. Like a scared pirate in a thunderstorm. Clues was where we first met. And we put yes, that in, in the bunker yes, still. All right, and then we'll just open that up. Boy, that that looks fantastic. All right, so we're, I'm going to pardon the reach, the Borden House reach here, our Bourbon Bills drink map. And I said we are going to tiki this up. We have a a clear tiki glass. Now, here's a little secret about um, tiki drinks. A lot of them will come in a tiki mug, and you can see my collection up here on the shelf. And that's because a lot of mixing goes into a lot of the tiki cocktails and frankly they come out kind of a muddy brown so they kind of hide them behind the ceramic. This one's a gorgeous color. So we're going to just load this baby up with some ice and we're going to feature this one in a glass tiki glass. Just have to fill that right on up to the top. This would work beautiful with crushed ice or cubes. We're just using cubes today. And we're going to just pour that baby in there. Look at that gorgeous color. Wow. That's pretty. That is a pretty drink. I think that would be an ocean. That's it. Boy, that is. That's literally like the color of Tampa Bay. All right. And what tiki drink would be complete without the appropriate tiki umbrella? and a, a wedge of pineapple, again the fresh stuff. So there we go and of course we need the obligatory paper straw because we want to be responsible. <laughs> and we have the lovely bootleg mini on the show as if you haven't noticed already. <laughs> and, and tell us what you think honey. Okay. Ooh, it looks beautiful. <laughs> mm. Oh you're gonna love this. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking that's what, what we call here in the South a porch pounder. It's a <laughs> <laughs> communal straw, that's all right. That is so refreshing. Yeah. That is. Oh, you got the... Oh, yeah. You got a beautiful the, color, The ratio of things Look just at that. perfect there. I, I, I know your wife will absolutely love this yeah. one. So, all right, so we're going we're gonna to come right back. Uh, we're going to go to our Talk Like a Pirate segment. And we'll be right back with the next cocktail. Hey, mateys, it's time to learn to talk like a pirate. Welcome back to Talk Like a Pirate. Today we have a special guest. We have Doc Grog that we pressed into service on this to impart his nautical knowledge. And we're going to learn about the King's Shilling today. 
What do you? What have you to say about that, Doc? Well, that be right. Now, there's a lot of people that wonder why these tankards have a glass bottom. And there's a good reason for that. It's because when the British Navy was struggling to get sailors, they would press gang people into joining the Navy. That's how we got bootleg Minnie on the show. Uh -huh. I pressed her into service, so to speak. And the way they would do it was gave sailors a king's shilling and a promise. And the king's shilling guaranteed that they would serve on the naval ships. Now, a lot of people didn't want to serve in the Navy. So, what did they do? They would take the king's shilling and they'd put it in their tankard of beer. Now, if you drink that and there's a king's shilling at the bottom, you're joining the Navy. <laughs> Bill and I, we have glass bottoms. So we're just looking at you. Pick up our tankards. <laughs> if there's no shilling, we're going to enjoy our beer, enjoy our grog, and we're not joining the Navy. We're going to miss you, honey. <laughs> and back to the show. All right, for our next cocktail, we're going to call this a, a little twist on the traditional pina colada. We're going to call this one the Billy Bob Colada. Phil, what are we using in this one? Uh, this is going to be a rum-based uh, Pensacola pina colada. Wow, that sounds fantastic. Mm -hmm. Let's give that a try. All right, so we're going to start off with two ounces of the Pensacola Pina Colada, which is rum-based, not moonshine-based. Okay, and here at Bourbon Bill's Pirate Bar, well, we pour a little heavy sometimes. Two ounces, wink, wink. All right, uh, one ounce of fresh-squeezed lime. Throw that in there. And then we're going to add in three to four ounces of pineapple juice. Good addition there. And this time we're gonna we're gonna lay in the coconut. This time we're gonna go for um, two two solid ounces of the cream de coco. And sometimes you gotta just work work it to get it out, especially when you start getting down, because we go through some pineapple uh, or coconut here at Urban Bill's Pirate Bar. Been known to happen. There we go. All that gooey deliciousness. All right, get that into the mix. Again, you're starting to see why cream cocoa comes last. Okay, there we go. Get that out of the way. Again, with a, a couple of agitator cubes, give that a good slap. Again with the shaking. Now you can always tell when it gets cold because that condensation starts to uh, form on the outside of, of the shaker tin a little bit and you can really get a bit. You want to make sure that you have a good seal because it like many gets really upset when things start sloshing everywhere. Give that, get that out to the way and slide me over um, Drink mat there, there sir. You Thank you. And we happen to have a pirate themed Pilsner glass. Actually, has the front design on it from the cover of Treasure Island. Okay, so we're going to load that up with some ice. And again, this one's actually a pretty attractive drink. So we can we can certainly use a clear vessel for this and show off that gorgeous color that you're going to see here in just a moment. There we go. That, that should about do it. Alrighty. And watch, watch where the magic happens. Look at that beautiful drink. Fill nice. that all the way up to the top. How about that? And of course we've got to garnish it appropriately. We're going to haul up, haul up the black flag here and garnish that with a pineapple wedge and a cherry. Look at that. Isn't that a gorgeous drink? Here, we'll use two straws this time. There we go. And you two tell me what you think of that. Ooh, it looks yummy. I know. It's 
New, new favorite, new favorite. Yeah, way to go, babe. That's awesome. Mmm. Yeah, well, what I, and what I love is two very different cocktails, but a lot of the same ingredients. A lot of the same, a lot of overlap. Yeah, yeah, that that goes back to the Don the Beachcomber days. He would, you know, he he skidded the seas on the South Seas, but he brought all his cocktails back from the Caribbean because back post pre prohibition, whiskey was not. A, not all that available, but rum was was plentiful. So a lot of these concoctions actually were based out of different Caribbean islands. So there we go. That that one right there is the Billy Bob Colada. So we're going to jump right into our next next and final cocktail for the day. <laughs> Welcome back to Pirate Joke of the Day. Doc Grog, what have you got for us today? I got a question for you. Why do mermaids wear seashells? Oh, I have no idea. Because bee shells are too small and bee shells are too big. <laughs> I'll drink to that. <laughs> Back to the show. See, that's the one thing about our variety show here is what, what we call edutainment. We try to entertain you a little bit and educate you a little bit about pirate history. All right, so let's, let's get to getting to the good part here. And we're going to do a little twist on the Moscow Mule, except this time we're going to call it the Florida Mule. Hey, Phil, what are we going to put in this one? We have our Tampa <clears throat> White Lightning. Now, this is... Uh, 111 proof. Woo what they call gunpowder proof. Yeah, so there you go. be careful with this, otherwise we might be three sheets to the wind. Well, you know, there are worse things that could happen here at Bourbon Bill's Pirate Bar. All right, now, you've seen me use the Mixology and Craft mixing, mixing set before, but this is what we call a build drink. We actually just mix the drink right in the vessel. We have this lovely copper uh, Moscow Mule mug. And it's kind of a funny story how that came apart, came, came about. Um, there was a guy that he bought all these copper mugs thinking they would be such a hit at bars and he couldn't hardly sell them to save his life. And he was really on the hook for a lot of money and he was sitting in the bar bemoaning the problem to the bartender. And the bartender said he was having a shortage of getting whiskey, he was having to rely on getting vodka. And this other guy said, well, you think you got a problem? I'm in Southern California trying to sell ginger beer. So the three of them came up with the, the original Moscow Mule, and suddenly all the stars in Hollywood were, were drinking out of these su suddenly sexy cups uh, with the new Moscow. It sounded very international, very deep intrigue kind of thing. So today we're going to use two ounces of the, the 110 proof. Put that right in there. This mule has a little bit of a kick. Pour that right in. Going to take one ounce fresh squeeze lime juice. Put that right in there. And then we're using Gosling's ginger beer today. Now, if you've seen our other videos on how to make a dark and stormy and some of our other cocktail videos on this channel, you know that I only use Gosling's. And we'll just pour that right up to the top. Boy, I can smell that aromatic ginger right there. Now this one's a real super simple thing. Uh, we just take that and we garnish that with a lime wheel. And we take our little cocktail stir and give it a good stir. And look how it's already frosting up on that copper. Copper is such a great conductor of temperature. and. You, you find it used a lot in the stills that actually goes into to making the alcohol. All right, there we go. All right, if you'll do the honors for me here, bootleg. Tell me what you think. I'll get a, oh, another straw here for Phil. Mm. I'm going to be left out. Mm. Oh, we can't. Wow. The mule's got a little bit of a yes, kick, it doesn't does. it? <laughs> but that's, that would be fantastic on a hot day. That is so <laughs> <laughs> mm. There we go. I think this is going to be on the new menu down there at Sailbird Distillery. So, yeah, and we have the link right here. So if you want to get any of these moonshine, be, be sure to just go ahead and visit our friends at Sailbird Distillery, and they'll get it shipped out to you post-haste. 
And that's about it for today's show. Now, if you like this show, give us a big thumbs up, share it out to people that you think will benefit from seeing this video. And one last thing, um, in the comments down there, let us know how it worked out for you with any of these, with all these great products from the Florida Moonshine Company. And tell us what city you're in. We're compiling a map. We're, we're so blessed that in, in a year we're in virtually 50 states and 57 countries around the world. So put your, put your city and, and country down in the comments and we'll get that map on, on the show here one of these days. Well, that's it for today. Thank you, Bootleg. Thank you, Phil, for coming on the show today Absolute and pleasure. sharing these great products. I, I, I hope you all had some fun trying some new uh, moonshine and rum-based products and we could tiki them up a little bit. And that's it for us for today. So, cheers. Cheers. <laughs>